Hi, I'm Steve Wunderlich, Assistant Product Manager at AMF Consumer Products. Today we're here at Parker 300 Lanes, AMF's Ball Test Center and Pro Shop Facility. We've got an exciting new product that's going to make ball drilling simpler and easier than it's ever been before, and I've got a little help to talk about it, Mo Pinnell, AMF's ball designer and creator of this new product, the Armadillo. How we doing, Mo? Hi, Steve. For the past three years, I've been giving seminars for AMF, and part of that seminar is explaining to the ball driller exactly how important the bowler's positive axis point is in creating ball reaction for every customer that comes through their doors. Well, let's show them exactly how it works. Okay, let's go. Mark the ball track, align the device, mark the positive axis point, and you're done. Wow, that's fast. Let's show them again though, and this time let's take it step by step and show them exactly how to do it. Okay, Steve, let's do it. Use the ruler located on the edge of the device to draw the center line of the drill pattern. Then measure half of the bowler span and make a mark. Now use the dotted line to align it with the center line of the drill pattern in order to draw the midline, which is exactly perpendicular to the center line. Next, we must trace at least half the ball track. If the ball has a flared ball track, make sure you mark the first revolution of the ball, which is the track closest to the thumb and finger holes. Using the device, take the track tracer, which are on the wide side of the device, and at only one point will this ball track be exactly underneath one of the track tracers or parallel to one of the track tracers for the entire length of the device. So slide the device across the ball until the ball track aligns itself exactly parallel to or directly underneath one of the track tracer lines for the entire length of the device, which on this ball is exactly here. At this point, the notch will mark the bowler's positive axis point. When you have located the positive axis point, slide the device slightly so that it covers both the pin and the center of gravity. We will now use the pin and CG locators, which are on the narrow side of the device where the notch is, and we will measure the exact distance that the pin and center of gravity are from the bowler's positive axis point. This will help us analyze the drilling technique used on the existing ball. There are numbers on the pin and CG locators to measure this distance. On this ball, the pin is five and a quarter inches from the bowler's positive axis point, and the CG is three and three eighths inches from the bowler's positive axis point. So we'll mark on the ball the pin distance as five and a quarter, and the CG distance as three and three eighths inches from the bowler's positive axis point. All we have left to do at this point is to draw the mid-plane so that we can measure the bowler's horizontal and vertical coordinate for his positive axis point. We do that by, again, using the dotted line. Place the dotted line on the midline and slide the device until the edge of the device aligns itself with the bowler's positive axis point. At this point, we will draw the mid-plane, which is perpendicular to the bowler's midline. Now we simply measure. On Steve's ball, he has no vertical coordinate. His positive axis point is on the midline. The next thing we do is to take the ruler side of the device again on the edge and measure to see that Steve's horizontal coordinate is four and three quarter inches. So this bowler's positive axis point is simply four and three quarters over 
by zero vertical, either up or down from the midline. Now let's review the four steps again. Use the ruler located on the edge of the device to draw the center line of the drill pattern. Then measure half of the bowler span and make a mark. Now use the dotted line to align it with the center line of the drill pattern in order to draw the midline which is exactly perpendicular to the center line. Next we must trace at least half the ball track. If the ball has a flared ball track Make sure you mark the first revolution of the ball, which is the track closest to the thumb and finger holes. Using the device, take the track tracer, which are on the wide side of the device, and at only one point will this ball track be exactly underneath one of the track tracers or parallel to one of the track tracers for the entire length of the device. So slide the device across the ball until the ball track aligns itself exactly parallel to or directly underneath one of the track tracer lines for the entire length of the device, which on this ball is exactly here. At this point, the notch will mark the bowler's positive axis point. When you have located the positive axis point, slide the device slightly so that it covers both the pin and the center of gravity. We will now use the pin and CG locators which are on the narrow side of the device where the notch is and we will measure the exact distance that the pin and center of gravity are from the bowler's positive axis point. This will help us analyze the drilling technique used on the existing ball. There are numbers on the pin and CG locators to measure this distance. On this ball, the pin is five and a quarter inches from the bowler's positive axis point, and the CG is three and three eighths inches from the bowler's positive axis point. So we'll mark on the ball the pin distance as five and a quarter, and the CG distance as three and three eighths inches from the bowler's positive axis point. All we have left to do at this point is to draw the mid plane so that we can measure the bowler's horizontal and vertical coordinate for his positive axis point. We do that by again using the dotted line. Place the dotted line on the midline and slide the device until the edge of the device aligns itself with the bowler's positive axis point. At this point, we will draw the midplane, which is perpendicular to the bowler's midline. Now we simply measure. On Steve's ball, he has no vertical coordinate. His positive axis point is on the midline. The next thing we do is to take the ruler side of the device again on the edge and measure to see that Steve's horizontal coordinate is four and three quarter inches. So this bowler's positive axis point is simply four and three quarters over by zero vertical, either up or down from the midline. And this device can do one other thing, Steve. It can be used in weighing a bowling ball. Let me show you how it's done. When the ball's in the scale, the first thing we'll measure with the armadillo is the side weight. Place the armadillo over the ball so that the dotted line on the armadillo lines up with the center line of the grip and the edge of the armadillo touches the scale. At this point we will balance the ball. In order to weigh the side weight we rotate the ball 180 degrees using the armadillo to align the dotted line with the center line of the grip and the armadillo 
with the edge of the scale. Now we will measure the side weight, which in this ball is 5 eighths of an ounce. The next weight we're looking for is the finger or thumb weight. At this point, we rotate the ball 90 degrees, put the dotted line of the armadillo on the midline, put the edge of the armadillo against the scale, rebalance the ball. Okay, right there, precisely. To measure the finger weight, rotate the ball 180 degrees. Again, placing the dotted line on the midline and resting the edge of the armadillo against the scale. At this point, we can now weigh the finger weight, which in this ball is one half ounce. The only weight left to get is the top weight, which we will do as always by placing the center of the grip away from the fulcrum of the scale, balancing the ball. Again, we rotate the ball 180 degrees, and now we measure the top weight, which in this case measures one and a half ounces. So, with the aid of the armadillo, we have found the bowler's positive axis point. We have measured how far the pin and the center of gravity are from the positive axis point. In this case, the pin is five and a quarter, and the CG is three and three-eighths inches from the positive axis point. We have measured the positive axis point, which in this case is four and three-quarters over, with no vertical measurement and the ball balances at one and a half ounces of top weight, a half an ounce of finger weight, and five eighths of an ounce of side weight. So the armadillo is used in measuring the entire ball for us. Well, today's professional ball drawer has a lot of decisions to make when creating ball reaction with these new high-tech balls. The first decision he has to make, obviously, is what ball is he going to drill for him. The second decision he must make is how much top weight the ball should have after it's drilled. After that, all the decisions he makes are wrapped around exactly where the bowler's positive axis point is in relationship to parts of the ball. Tell us about that. Well, the track flare will be determined by how far the pin is from the bowler's positive axis point. The amount of hook will be determined by how far the center of gravity is from the bowler's positive axis point. And if they need a weight hole, that will also affect the ball reaction. It depends on whether the weight hole is being placed on the midplane or below the midplane all of which react exactly to the bowler's positive axis point. Exactly. Now, Steve, why don't you show them a few layouts so they can create the exact ball reaction they're looking for for their customers? Sure, Mo. I'd be happy to. As Mo and I travel around the world doing these ball drilling seminars, the most important aspect of the ball drilling that we discuss is pin placement in relationship to the bowler's positive axis point. Today I'm going to talk about three extreme pin placements that create a wide variety of motions for your customers. One will be six and a half inches pin placement from the bowler's positive axis point. The second will be three and three eighths from the bowler's positive axis point. And the last one will be one inch from the bowler's positive axis point. Let's start out here at six and a half inches. Six and a half inch pin placement in relationship to the bowler's positive axis point creates a very stable, even arc. The ball will skid down the lane well, but it will not have a drastic snap on the back end. Let's, let me show you exactly how we're going to do this by giving you an example of a common axis point and then actually laying the ball out for you here. Typically, let's do a right-handed bowler, and let's say that his axis point is five and a half inches over and one half inch up. This is kind of just a basic access point for a lot of bores that you'll run across in, in doing your everyday business. I'm going to use the armadillo here, and we're going to lay out this ball for you and show exactly how this is done. We're going to put the pin six and a half inches from the bowler's positive access point, and it, for this example, we're also going to put the center of gravity five inches from the bowler's positive access point. What we do here is we draw what we call arcs. We take the armadillo and using the ruler side of the armadillo, 
we draw six inches, several different places that are six inches from the pin in order to create a arc here. And then we connect the dots and we've created a little arc. All these places on this line are six inches from the pin. We then go and we measure from the center of gravity and see where five inches for this example intersects that arc. And in this case, it's right here. So this is where the bowler's positive axis must be after we are all done drilling the ball. Now, because in, in the example that we discussed, the bowler's axis point is over five and a half inches and up one half of an inch. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to use the armadillo to create a mark one half inch below the axis point because we know that's where the midline of this particular bore will be. And then I'm going to draw a line from that line one inch below the positive axis right to the center of gravity because we're not going to give this bowler any finger or thumb weight. Okay? Then I'm going to draw the midplane, which is a 90 degree angle off the midline through the bowler's positive axis point. And now I know where this bowler's midplane is. Using that line, I now can measure over five and a half inches, which is what we know to be the distance from the bowler's positive axis point, and show where the center of this bowler's grip shall be when we've completed drilling. Lay it, the armadillo on here to draw a nice straight line. And for this particular bowler that we've laid out this ball, his finger holes are going to go there and his thumb down here. And we've got the pin six and one half inches from the bowler's positive axis point. We've got the center of gravity five inches from the bowler's positive axis point. Because this line falls right next to it, we probably will not need to have an extra hole. So that's the first example of how to lay out a ball using arcs and the armadillo to create the exact motion we need for our customer. The second drilling we're going to show you today is the leverage drilling. Placing the pin three and three eighths inches from the bowler's positive axis point in its maximum reaction position. For this example, we're also going to place the center of gravity three and three eighths inches from the bowler's positive axis point. This is a favorite drilling among many ball drillers as it creates the hardest snap, the biggest angle into the pocket, and tremendous hitting power for the average bowler. For this drilling, once again, we're going to use the armadillo to create arcs, which makes it very simple to do. For three and three eighths from the pin, I'm going to draw several lines here that are all three and three eighths from the pin. And then I'm going to draw my nice little arc here. And then I'm going to find where the center of gravity, at three and three eighths from that, will intersect the arc. Does it right there. So this is where the bowler's positive axis point should be when I'm finished drilling. Once again, we're using the same bowler. We know his axis point is down a half an inch. So we'll go a half inch below that, draw another line, and we will intersect from that line through the center of gravity. So we don't really need any finger weight in a ball that's going to be as loaded as this one. Then using the dots in the center of the armadillo, we line that up on the midline to create the midplane. So this is the bowler's midplane, and we know this bowler's axis point is over five and a half inches. So I put the five and a half of the ruler side right there. I move over, and now I have the center of the bowler's grip. Once again, I flip it upside down and line up the dots again to create my perfectly 90 degree angle. And we've laid this RPM out with a full leverage drilling, placing the pin three and three eighths inches from the bowler's positive axis point the center of gravity three and three eighths inches from the positive axis point, and now we have the center of the bowler's grip. The only decision we will have to make at this point, because the center of gravity is so far from the center of the bowler's grip, it will probably need an extra hole, and the decision will, will be, do we want to place the extra hole on the midplane, or do we want to go beyond it? Because this ball is going to be so reactive, I think this one will be just fine for the particular bowler that we're discussing here. The third drilling I'm going to show you today is the one inch pin placement. This particular drilling creates very stable motion and is terrific on heavy oil. Uh, this ball will go into a very early roll. For this example, we're going to use the pin one inch from the positive axis point, but in order to help make the ball flip a little bit on the back end, we're going to place the center of gravity three inches from there. Once again, we're going to use the armadillo to create arcs from the pin and the center of gravity, starting with the pin. Here we go, one inch, is, one inch away, drawing a nice little circle around there. Then we find where 
three inches intersects, and it's right here. So this is where the bowler's positive axis point will be after drilling. We know this particular bowler, his axis point is down one half of an inch. Create a line there, and then we draw a line from below. So we then turn it around and use the dots on the armadillo to create a 90 degree line, which will be the bowler's midplane. Once again, we know the bowler's axis point is over five and a half, place five and a half over there. Go back to here, and here we've got the, the center of the bowler's grip. Turn the armadillo 90, 90 degrees. And there's the center of the bowler's grip. Here's where his fingers will go, and here's where his thumb. Once again, we've got a ball here with the center of gravity way away from it, so it's got too much side weight to make it meet ABC specifications, so an extra hole will be required. In this particular example, I'd recommend that we go beyond the midplane on the midline to draw the extra hole, approximately two inches. And so we're going to drill the extra hole right there in order to take the side weight out required to make this ball meet American Bowling Congress specifications. So we have the pin one inch from the bowler's positive axis point, the center of gravity three inches from the bowler's positive axis point, and the extra hole two inches beyond the midplane on the midline. You've now created a very stable, controllable ball motion and a ball that will go into an early roll even in heavy oil. Using these three different patterns that we've talked about today, you can create dramatically different ball reactions for the same exact bowler by placing the pin in the three different positions that we discussed today. You know, we at AMF here have taken tremendous efforts to create the leading technology of today's bowling balls. We think that the new tool that Mo here has created for us is going to help you use that technology simpler and easier. Mo, thanks a lot for your help on explaining this, and I think you've done a terrific job. The Pro Shop guys are going to love the armadillo.